Okay, here we are with J.P. Cormier visiting our uh, shop today and playing some guitars. And he's uh, now sitting with a Doc Watson signature model. And I want to say something about this guitar. Doc Watson started with a Gallagher G50. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was 68, I think he started playing the G50. Played it on the Will the Circle Be Unbroken. Mm -hmm. In 73, about 73, he was playing an accident, T. Michael and Merle, uh, accident up in Nashville, and J.W. drove up to have dinner with him before the show. Yeah. And T. Michael told me this story. He said, uh, they're sitting there eating, and J.W. says, Doc, I want to build you another guitar. Yeah. You maybe have heard this. And Doc had four things that he wanted. Right. Because at that point, they weren't scalloping the bracing. Mm -mm. So he wanted a, a voice top. Right. He wanted one and three-quarter nut. Yep. He wanted jumbo frets, and he wanted a neck like the Les Paul that he played. Yeah. I think it was a 57. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about that point. Yeah. So T. Michael said, basically on a napkin and TGI Fridays, oh they designed God. the Doc Watson model. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and the first Doc Watson model went to Doc in 1974. Wow. Later, um, Don wanted to build the Doc Watson signature model. Mm hmm and with Merle's help, he wrote his signature out. Yep. And now we inlay that. Yep. On the twelfth right there. Yep. And it's magic seeing that there. It is. And I, I have done some of the inlay work myself, and I'm telling you, I'm serious. It's a spiritual experience to inlay that name. Yep. <laughs> I Can saw, you believe that? I saw Doc sign an autograph one time without help. Okay. Right? Okay. And he couldn't do it, of course, and he yeah. just. And the, it was that concert when I was 13 years old and we're all oh. standing backstage and the Doc and Merle's guitar album had just come out. So yeah. there was vinyl being sold and I had one, everybody had one. And uh, they were all lined up and uh, the, the master of ceremonies at the halls, a huge theater in Halifax, he was looking at the people and he goes, you know he's blind, right? And they're like, we don't care, we just want to mark on it. And he did, he just sat there yeah. and he was so happy. Yeah. And he was such a kind, giving right. man. Right. He, he music was. Uh, he wanted to feed his family. That right. was what he did right. it for. Absolutely. And in that, in, that. in that endeavor, mm -hmm. he connected with people on a, yeah. on a level that you, that you know, stars don't connect with people. He's so authentic. He right. was. He was just a guy, right? <laughs> Who well, happened to be the best flat picker right. in the world? Yeah. And invented it, ver veritably invented what he did, right? right. He did, right. before him there was Riley Puckett and there was a few guys, but there was never anything like Doc. Yeah. And he altered my life and altered everybody's life that played guitar. And this guitar here, I'll, I mean, I'll play it. It's just one of those, I always remember him talking to Merle on that record when Merle said, it rings like a bell. <laughs> and him playing, tuning it, he was... I remember, yeah. Right. And Merle went, that guitar rings like a bell. Yeah. You're talking about Merle Travis. Yeah, Merle of Travis and Doc, you know. Yeah. And that's what Doc did. He was, yeah. he was tuning it backwards, right? Right. That's a great memory. Listen, and it sounds just like that, right? So if, obviously this guitar is going to be an absolute cannon. And But Doc played a lot of stuff in the capo on. And uh, I'm sh I know that this guitar is built for that. One of the sure. doesn't lose a thing. All the body still there. All the body, and that's what you want from a great dreadnought. Is you don't want it to die when you shorten the neck because you have to do it all the time in bluegrass, right? Right. And Doc did it because he had to play, you know, tunes in the in the shape of C in other keys that the fiddler could play in, D okay. and A right. and stuff like that, right? So, but he also played stuff like the Black Mountain Rag up in E, because it was higher and more piercing, and he could be heard above the band in the dance halls they were playing in. So he put it up in E, and this is where he did it, and the first time I ever heard him do this on the recordings from Newport Folk Festival in 1963, changed my life forever. <laughs> Thank you. 
You just can't help it. It sounds just like him. Uh, I just feel him in the room when I when I play that kind of stuff on this guitar. And I have my my G70, which is very similar to this one. And uh, this is just a masterpiece of guitar building. Masterpiece. <laughs> Well done, Mr. Mathis. Well All right, done. thank you, JP. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you.